Hello everyone, um, this is Jerome Wright and once again you're joining me on my YouTube Jeronification channel. Um, here in this um, video I'm going to be decoding another um, Renaissance artist um, artwork, um, artwork depicting that of um, Christ. Okay, and this um, particular um, piece of artwork um, of Christ is by Andrea Montagna. Uh, Montagna, uh, Montagna. I'll, if you want to Google the image um, for verification, basically all you have to do is um, his name is spelled A N D R E A, Andrea um, Monten Montenegro, uh, Montenegro, or whatever. M A N T E G N A. Okay, and all you have to do is go with Christ. It's my position that these images of Christ. Um, whether they're from catacomb images or coming through through to Renaissance era, through to current, there are encryptions that actually could be realized either in the hair portions or in the bearded portions of that of this individual we have come to know as Christ. It's my also my position that the sole recognition of this individual through all ancient religion globally is because of this individual's contribution to altering the um, the genetics of mankind's being. It's my position further is that if you understand what is the message behind these bizarre images which is that in, in ancient religion which I've decoded and if you understand the images in the messages and the encryptions then the text is understood as well. All right. Um, again, I want to tell you that I'm going to point out some things you see. I actually put the cross on Christ's head because the cross means the true meaning of the cross is is if you ask were to ask any clergy what the true, um, true meaning of the cross was, they would tell you that it was a given. That's it. I know the true meaning of the cross, and you have never heard it before except here on my YouTube Jeronification channel and also on my Alien UFOs um, website where um, I have a forum there and it's um. I am an alien and so are you and it's um, in dreams and experiences and that is under my name as well too. All right? The cross means the, the cross referencing of mankind's genes with that of animal genes okay? um, and living cells. It's, it's cross referencing of our genes, our being okay? and also the contamination to further a cult like process, a ritual that has always been in place. All of the missing gaps, all of the misunderstanding, everything is brought together in the one understanding through my discoveries and it brings and sheds light on it all. I'm going to take this here image with Christ again okay and then I'm going to bring an image up of Leonardo da Vinci. Notice how the face of Christ looks to be this portion look, looks, looks a little uh, bizarre and, 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 and seemingly unrealistic here. It's my position that they always take in these images of Christ, they make one eye appear dead, meaning that he has one eye in this world and one eye in the world beyond. Okay, um, Da Vinci does it. Everybody does it. Or either they have the eyes done uh, down on. If you show me a painting that has both eyes of Christ looking like they're normal, then this is not a recognizable painting amongst the the, the scenario that calls for um, um, artists to be in this be privileged to this um, um, to this environment of recognition through the underworld of these encryptions in other words okay so now what is here look at first of all I can see apes and everything else I can see an ape in here I can draw your face of an ape but what I want to um, show you is here when you google the well first of all let's go to the ear go to the ear the ear looks let me see if I can turn this up and give you a little bit more light without... There you go. Here. Go to the ear. Notice that the ear... This is not no normal person's ear. There are encryptions in this ear. First of all, there's a witch-like woman here. This is her head, her chin, her mouth, her eye, her eye. And it shows you snaking off of her genes coming around into that of Christ. Now... 
What is it snaking around? Wherever you see this witch-like woman, the Medusa-like woman that has snakes off of her, which is important, people, because all through our Egyptian ancient images, all through that of um, um, the, the sweetest ancient stones and all of this, all we keep seeing is these women, this woman, with snakes. All through ancient texts, this woman with snakes coming out of their head, branching off, and it's, it's re in, in, in direct relation to the Medusa-like woman. The snake lady, if you Google the ancient image of the Renaissance, the snake lady, and these things come, these images, people, I know exactly what she stands for. I know how she calls for our existence. I call her the mother of creation, and I understand her in a way that you could possibly never imagine through my paranormal experience and encounter. Here she is right here, her image in the earlobe of Jesus, right there. Snaking off of her is a snake. Comes around, bang. There's other creatures that you could not even possibly even understood, but they are our ancestors as well. In between, in, in Jesus' earlobe, there's an image of an ape and multidimensional other images, but there's an ape in there, okay? Now, check this out. Branching off into his beard what causes for the change because it's my position that Jesus stands for his contribution to furthering mankind's genes from their original state which means ape and African and this is what this is representing representing how did he do this genetically well it shows you through the encryptions in his beard here in his beard you'll see an image of a lion you will even see the, the lion's eye when you google this image right there and then the lion's face there off of the lion's head you know what comes off of the lion's head is a penis you see that penis there there is a penis right there you see that so what is the lion representing the lion's genes the lion's semen so what is the lion bridged over with well behind the lion's penis is another penis it's a black penis and you know what that is um, 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 morphing off of the image of an ape the multi-dimensional images. So you have two penises in the cheekbone right there of Jesus. Showing you that there was a breakdown of the ape, meaning our African, our ancient African ancestor in closest, um, in closest um, 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 genetically to the ape creature, ape species. How was their genetics broken down? With a contamination of the lion's genes right there. And you can see the ape right here. Okay, so it's telling you genetically. So back then, they didn't. This is how they described genetic intervention and genetic manipulation and genetic contamination. They showed the creature that they wanted you to understand was um, participating, and it shows you through their penis. Okay, it shows you in blood. You see, you understand, people. Now, now let me show you something else because this is our beloved Jesus here. That this is all being. Look down here. What do you see right here? You don't see this calf-like creature, this 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 bull-like creature. See the nostrils here, and then the head. See that? This is all describing how through these creatures, our ape ancestor was genetically attacked and resulting in the likenesses of our Caucasian appearing Jesus. Now, see the gazelle-like creature in Jesus's mustache. You see this creature here, that gazelle-like creature? There's the mouth. Look at look at how detailed this is, people. You see the nostrils. You see the mouth. And look how discolorated this is. And we we and we can like our gazelle or our antler, our deer-like creature. Look at how the shades of coloring creates the very likeness of that creature. Even the mouth is direct. Now that I pointed this to you, you can Google the image and go see for yourself. Now. What did this come over? What's coming off of this creature? Well, long and behold, there is another penis right there. And guess where that penis is going to? The mouth of a king figure that is here. There's a man image right here, and he's donning the crown of a king, showing you that religion, in the sense of it, we understand it to be, and through the ancient rooted royalty, these genes are altered and procured and new babies are being created. The creatures, which you cannot see, I can see. Now, I did another video of Leonardo da Vinci.
Oh, hold on. Let me let me give you Leonardo da Vinci first, and then I'm gonna give you his image of Christ. Leonardo da Vinci image, his self portrait. You see Leonardo da Vinci up in there? This is Leonardo da Vinci's forehead. You see this? In this image of Leonardo da Vinci, look. The same exact image of that gazelle-like creature, that ram-like creature, right there on this side of the Leonardo da Vinci lip, right there, with the tongue out, with the creature on the other end. Identical to what is being stated here. The same creature here. And this artist's captioning of Jesus' image art. Look, at the end of the penis. Look what this looks like, what Leonardo da Vinci did. And this is Leonardo da Vinci face. The image of a woman, the mother of creation, just as in Christ's beard. Over here, you see how all this is bleeding out of Christ's beard over there and coming into... Look at this, people. Because this is, this is something to be reckoned with. You see this? Look. Look at Leonardo da Vinci's self-portrait. I did this video. I put this on my alien UFO site some years ago, but I also made a video of it in my findings and my multi um, 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 videos I have here of Leonardo da Vinci. But look at how all of this is self-verifying through another artist's artwork. Right there. So, describe to me what is... One, two, three penises attaching animals. Look, this is a gazelle-like creature with a penis coming over, bridged over Jesus' mouth, telling you that all of these, all of these bridgings is, is, is showing in here. The lion is involved and the ape, which represents our, um, our ape and African ancestor. And these penises coming off, telling you that there's a genetic intervention, a genetic interjection. And it shows you who was involved at the highest levels of Christianity and at the highest levels of royalty. And it's, look at the look at the nostrils of this beast right here. Look, all of these creatures, which are in a cult-like way, symbolized in, 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 in Christianity and in religion. Everything that they wanted you to believe was mythical. I can do this with every ancient artwork, every ancient artist's artwork, and I can read to you exactly what is being stated. You know why? Because I am having a genuine paranormal and experience and encounter, which not only am I drawn to this, not only can I understand this, but I am a part of this. Leonardo da Vinci, self-portrait. Look here in his lip. You see that creature? I drew it here first, people. Here. I highlighted it here first. With the being on the other end. I know what this being is. People. The same thing is here. Look. Look at these creatures. These multidimensional faces in Jesus' hair. The same thing is, well, hold on, let me take, let me give you Leonardo da Vinci image and portrait of Christ. Half of Christ's face here has a horn being, the thorn thing that he's supposed to actually be wearing. Look at this half being right here in Christ's face. Look at the mustache and the open mouth. There's a horn that comes over, created over Christ's head, and then there's a horn here. I'm going to show you how that... Now, how did all of this happen? Look at these beings. Look. And Christ's beard. There's other stuff. I'm going to bring up a couple pictures. Look. This is Leonardo da Vinci's now. And this is 1490. I'm telling you that there is a demonic figure. Half of Christ... I mean, half of Christ's face. Looking that way. There's the nose. There's the mouth. And what gives this away is that the bearded portion of this thing's mouth. Look. There's the facial hair right there around the mouth. Around the open mouth. And then Christ's eye is shared with the eye of that being, looking this way. And here Christ's horn, um, 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 supposed to be his thorn, 
um, 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 wreath that he's wearing creates it stops here but it creates a horn coming around here that belongs to this being which Christ genetically evolved over in Christ's mouth here if you look inside of the mouth you'll see the image of an ape if you go inside of Christ's mouth there's an image of an ape and there's an image of a woman I promise you see my video on this I'm not gonna go back into this because I have a video on it but you can turn it either way and you see those faces right there you see that highlighted face look you see that it creates the face of no other than my favorite woman the mother of creation and the ape creature multi-dimensional images throughout the entire image now let's go back to something else here on the end of da Vinci the ram like creature you see keep looking at this people look at look at this okay I'll come right next to here and look at how the ram like creature is created here look at this creature the nose look at the mouth the lips the chin and look Jesus it's, um, Christ's mouth creates the eye of the creature and then the horn is coming off this way just as that creature is a, look how you see the face now the shadow of the face I can see look at this look at this that creature that is here right there and I think I might have one darker than that but we'll go and say that creature that's here is bridged over showing you the creature from which he emerged which you can you can almost see it right there which is this creature you see it right there and it shows you the same creatures in the hair of Jesus and it shows you what was done to genetically alter and contaminate other beings of our world now here there's some more stuff that I'm going to show you about this and let me see what else I'm going to show you there's another you see this and there's our dear ape creature right there Leonardo da Vinci work and Christ's eye which is not created fully by by um by da Vinci but this one is and that one is not look people all self verifying this is our world's famous artist Leonardo da Vinci and look at this look at these images people it gets deeper than that because I know what these creatures are and I know what this is representing and I can show you the direction from which they came the directions from which where they where they're going and I can show you where they're at today not just based on based on the artistry's work because these are grails genetic grails as to who we are and these people that are symbolized as as um, being historic and um, monumental times they are the ones that were the ones that were the genetic carriers and contaminators of our world today and this is why they're being symbolized and their bloodlines are secured today and saved and being still cross-referenced and contaminated through us and this is what our existence is all about now this is Leonardo da Vinci but let's go back to Andrea artwork here because see you can google this picture now and see the little faces, the chin, the mouth, the eye up here. Now you can start seeing the truth for what it actually is. And you start seeing these little faces for what they truly are now. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And it's my position that the highly worshipped being that is known to be Christ is actually referencing this guy as being a genetic a manipulator and contaminator of our world and when you read into the ancient biblical text for really what it is it describes how he genetically bridged himself and genetically went out and contaminated other nations with the genetics that he were contaminating with no more different than being that of a person in your own neighborhood who has AIDS or HIV positive or any other type of di transmitted disease and go from house to house on your block and contaminate your entire neighborhood your entire city 
and then the neighboring cities. And it's my position that if you look at this for what it is, then you will understand the message which is being described in the Bible and through the images of, of that of Christ. Now, for those of you that are in woe or in disbelief and have your mouth wide open, look at those bizarre images for what they truly are. Look at angels. Look at the works of Michelangelo. Look at the, the, the works of all of these artists that portray images of that of Jesus or ancient historical biblical moments and ask yourself the unusual scenario in which those images present. And each and every one of those that you can describe or you, you look in and say, well, I see that. I see that. Well, people... I can do this too, because you know why? They're multidimensional images, like overlayments of images over images over images over images that create other images that you know nothing about, because you know why? Because you had no idea that we had ancestral roots to creatures and beings that you could never possibly imagine. And then there were mutations that were created from these um, 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 interventions and manipulations that you know nothing about. But through my real and genuine paranormal experience and encounter, I can bring you somewhere that you would never had imagined coming to. But yet, you know what? Can't no one stop or undo what I have discovered. Because you know why? It is the truth. You can't stop the truth. Everything that you have believed in, came to believe in, is not true. I'm going to bring you reality. And all I have to do is tune you in and show you and tell you, go to Da Vinci's image of Christ. That's all I have to do is show you my highlights. Go to Da Vinci's highlights of Christ and show you these beings. All you have to do is stop my video and look and see if you see a demonic figure here and the horn coming around. I thought that I had the other one up here. I actually have the horn. Let me see if I have the one with the horn drawn out. Or go to Leonardo da Vinci's and look at the penis. I mean, go, I mean, go to um, um, this guy here, Andrea Montenegro. See the penis and then see the gazelle-like creature there. And then go do a side-by-side -side with Leonardo da Vinci. self-portrait, do it side by side, and see if you see the gazelle-like creature and this creature, which represents the same thing, because it's telling you through this creature, penis, genetics, the image of this being, a horn being, in fact. There's a horn being here, and there's a horn being there. So if this being is attaching that being, it's telling you from the presence of this being genetically came this being and Da Vinci is telling you that genetically he is part of it all and he's showing you the cycle from which he that these transformations went that resulted in his bloodline and in his likeness and he boastfully shows you in his artwork his own self-portrait that he knows who he genetically is just like this person did with this image of Christ. It's showing you the same exact thing. And it's showing you the animals that contributed to the breakdown of the ancestral roots, genetic roots of our black, our, our African and ape ancestor. And this is what this is all about, people. Now, my name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. Let me see if I can come up with that other image of, um, where are we at here with Jerome? Because I have... And I did the last, I broke down the last supper and all of that. Let me see if I have another image up here. And I don't believe I do. So I'm going to close this video out with that because I thought I had the horned image up there. I'll probably find it afterward. But anyway, where we at here? I don't think that we can do this. I don't think that we can do this. I don't think that we can do this. But I'm going to leave it with that. I'm going to leave you with that. Um, and please, people, see my other videos. I'm looking through my my notes that I have on this. And Leonardo da Vinci's work is 
pretty much decoded by me, even as Vivitruvium. Okay, I found the horn Christ here, so I want to take and um and give you that right now. I'm with David. I'm doing the video, and here we go here. where the horn is actually highlighted coming around up to a point so when you google Leonardo da Vinci's image of Christ you will find now through my highlights this being that Leonardo da Vinci actually incorporated into the like, likeness and image of that of Christ. Not just Leonardo da Vinci, though. It's my position that every artist that is an artist that created in the Renaissance era, era an image of this man, you would actually see the identical same thing. And it causes for the extraction and the genetic change of who we are and where we actually evolved from genetically. Now, also, I call your attention to go to Leonardo da Vinci's own self-portrait image and look at the mustache area of Leonardo da Vinci and identify and associate yourself with these creatures, which are identical to that of Marcelio, I mean, um, Andrea Mar Montenegro, right here, identical. And it's my position that all of these things are telling us who we are. Now, before I close this out, all of these images from the Renaissance era, these pictures of Christ, and also other arts that I have decoded that you can see my many videos here that I have. This stuff was created, people, and it's in a time where there was a no-nonsense, where there was an iron fist ruling by re the, the the religious institutions that were in place, the ancient root of religion. So these artists would have been beheaded for creating these types of um, artworks with these types of encryptions. But it's my position that this stuff is saturated throughout every ancient building of our world, all globally. So it's my position that for these artists to create this work, which was oversawn, by our ancient rooted um, um, religious, um, which I don't care whether it's Hindu, I don't care whether it's Buddhist, I don't care whatever it is, whether, I mean, whatever the, this religion is of our world, all right, is my position that all of this stuff is actually shown to them first, to our ancient religious leaders first, and approved upon. You can see black faces here. You see, you see these faces here? Lips, chin, look at this, nose, eye, look at the faces. And you know what these are? These are our black ancestral faces that are hidden in the shadows of the overall image because you must show their faces first because if it wasn't for those faces first, this, fir this face would not have emerged. And this is them paying homage to show you how genetically it was broken down. Now, if you make sense of it, look at these creatures, people. Eye, forehead, nose, look at, and then, and then this is the mouth, and but this is also the nostrils of that, um, the what you call them, that steer like creature right there. Now, see, I'm telling you, these multi dimensional images shown how through our darker ancestors, our, our, our blackest of ancestors, our apis of ancestors, and other creatures came the genetic breakdown and likenesses of our Caucasian counterparts. My name is Jerome Wright, you're watching my Jeronification channel. I'll do another video later on today, but for now, just enjoy this one, and um, I'll catch you in my next video. Thank you. If you ask were to ask any clergy what the cru um, true meaning of the cross was, they would tell you that it was a given. That's it. I know the true meaning of the cross, and you have never heard it before except here on my YouTube Deronification channel, and also on my Alien UFOs um, website, where um, I have a forum there, and it's... Um, I am an alien and so are you and it's um, in dreams and experiences and that is under my name as well too. 
All right. The cross means the, tro the cross referencing of mankind's genes with that of animal genes. Okay. Um, and living cells. It's, it's cross referencing of our genes, our being. Okay. And also the contamination to further a cult like process, a ritual that has always been in place. All of the missing gaps, all of the misunderstanding, everything is brought together. And the one understanding through my discoveries and it brings and sheds light on it all I'm gonna take this here image with Christ again okay and then I'm gonna bring an image up of Leonardo da Vinci notice how the face of Christ looks to be this portion look looks looks a little uh, bizarre and, 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 and seemingly unrealistic here it's my position that they always take in these images of Christ they make one eye appear dead, meaning that he has one eye in this world and one eye in the world beyond. Okay, um, Da Vinci does it. Everybody does it. Or either they have the eyes done uh, down on. If you show me a painting that has both eyes of Christ looking like they're normal, then this is not a recognizable painting amongst the the, the scenario that calls for um, um, artists to be in this, be privileged to this. Um, um, to this environment of recognition through the underworld of these encryptions in other words okay so now what is here look at first of all I can see apes and everything else I can see an ape in here I can draw your face of an ape but what I want to uh, show you is here when you google the well first of all let's go to the ear go to the ear the ear looks let me see if I can turn this up and give you a little bit more light without there you go here Go to the ear. Notice that the ear. This is not no normal person's ear. There are encryptions in this ear. First of all, there's a witch-like woman here. This is her head, her chin, her mouth, her eye, her eye, and it shows you snaking off of her genes coming around into that of Christ. Now, what is it snaking around? Wherever you see this witch-like woman, the Medusa-like woman that has snakes off of her, which is important, people, because all through our Egyptian ancient images, all through that of um, um, the, the sweetest ancient stones and all of this, all we keep seeing is these women, this woman, with snakes. All through ancient texts, this woman... Hello, everyone. Um... This is Jerome Wright, and once again, you're joining me on my YouTube Jeronification channel. Um, here in this um, video, I'm going to be decoding another um, Renaissance artist um, artwork, um, artwork depicting that of um, Christ. Okay, and this um, particular um, piece of artwork um, of Christ is by Andrea Montagna. Uh, Montagna, uh, Montagna. I'll, if you want to Google the image. Um, for verification, basically all you have to do is, um, his name is spelled A-N-D-R-E-A, -E Andrea um, Monten Montenegro, uh, Montenegro, or whatever, M-A-N-T-E-G-N-A, -E -E okay, and all you have to do is go with Christ. It's my position that these images of Christ, um, whether they're from catacomb images or coming through through to Renaissance era, through to current, there are encryptions that actually could be realized either in the hair portions or in the bearded portions of that of this individual we have come to know as Christ. It's my also my position that the sole recognition of this individual through all ancient religion globally is because of this individual's contribution to altering the um, the genetics of mankind's being. It's my position further is that if you understand what is the message behind these bizarre images, which is that in, in ancient religion, which I've decoded, and if you understand the images and the messages and the encryptions, then the text is understood as well. All right. Um, again, I want to tell you that I'm going to point out some things you see. I actually put the cross on Christ's head because the cross means the true meaning of the cross is is 